My life started in an incubator in Champagne's Hospital with my parents not knowing if I'm going to be okay. Spoiler alert, I'm here. <laughs> you can see me today. But it didn't stop me from knowing I had struggles along the way. At a very young age, my mom noticed my weird behavior. For example, instead of playing with Barbie dolls or other toys like other kids, I would play with a fork and spoon. In second grade, my mom finally took me to the doctor and I was finally diagnosed with autism. There were ups and downs of having autism. As a kid, I went to many therapists and doctors. I was put on a lot of medication. I was in a neurotypical classroom. That was kind of hard for me. I would be bullied or misunderstood for my outbursts. I would have a lot of fits at school. My mom would come and get me from school and take me home. In fourth grade, my mom decided to move from the big city of Chicago to the small little town called Fairbury, Illinois which is where my grandparents live. I started attending a school in Chinoa, then I transferred from that school all the way into Forest, Illinois. In fifth grade, we moved from the big city to, sorry, into the big city, Bloomington Normal. During my middle school years, I attended Evans Junior High School. At Evans, they had a program for kids with disabilities and special needs. Every time I moved, yes, it was overwhelming, but it felt like I had a new opportunity to be a whole new person hide who I am, and not be bullied. Now that sounds really nice as someone's outspies perspective, but for those three years, it was not the way Hollywood made it seem. At Evans, all, many of my teachers told me that my goals were not possible. That is when the bullying became worse. In my PE class, a boy had asked me if autism was a disease. I told him no, but he convinced everyone in my sixth grade that it was a disease. They thought they could catch the autism. I talked to my teachers and I was told, just ignore him. In the middle of my sixth grade year, a girl dare, was dared to put sriracha ketchup in my hair for $20. I could still feel the wet ketchup in my hair. I felt violated. I could still hear people laughing at me. I felt humiliated. I told my teacher, and you're not going to believe what she told me. I was told, again, just ignore it. I think we can all agree in here that we just hate hearing just ignore it. At a young age, I was taught to trust my teachers. This started making me question if I trust my own teachers to be my advocate. I started knowing this during my eighth grade IEP and that my teachers treated me differently. I felt like I was being treated like I was stupid. My aide, Mrs. P, was helping me write a history letter to the United States saying, we out Britain. <laughs> I gave her my ideas and she would write them down, but she would, ch sorry, let me repeat that. <laughs> I gave her my ideas, she would turn them down and then change them. By the time the letter was done, it became hers. This made me feel like I was unimportant, that my words didn't matter. But through that time, my mom would tell me to use their words in judgment as a way to fuel my fire. I'm here to tell you and to remind myself that yes, I am here and yes, it is possible. Yes, I have autism, but I have overcome a lot of things and many more that I could not fit while writing this. I learn not to just be told, just ignore it. I, choose, I want to choose the way I want to live. I want to go to college. I want to earn a degree. I want to be a teacher in New York or even be an administrator at my church, Eastview. There are so many possibilities for the way that my life could be, and it will be the way I choose it.